Healing crystals, skincare routines, knitting a sweater, fitting in jeans. With Katie and Sarah, no need to worry, you're on a lady journey. I remember I watched an interview with Liz Fair and this girl, I think it was Anya, Nikki's friend who does music for Nikki mm, and opens mm-hmm. for her, was like, you know, it was just so inspiring when you came around because no one sounded like you. And I was like, well, cause she was like the first female singer that wasn't dependent on her voice. Like men always kind of get away with like Willie Nelson doesn't have the greatest voice. Right. And Liz Fair didn't have the greatest voice, but mm-hmm. it wasn't. And she still did really well. And it was kind of like the first female to have that. Yeah. Not you're not you don't have to be an amazing voice if you've got like great you're song lyrics. An entertainer. And yes. you know, it's it, it's so true. Like Willie Nelson. He's like, hey. My dad even like never Bob Dylan. Got it. You're like <laughs> I saw Bob Dylan in concert once um, when I was in college. My girlfriends and I went, and it was very fun. We went down to Bloomington, Indiana, and he was just playing the organ the entire time, kind of dancing. He didn't do one hit. He did zero hits. We were like, why did we come here? He seemed like he was not well. I think at a certain point, he's like, I'm done. I watched the We Are the World doc, and... You realize everyone there had amazing voices. And then after a while, he kind of just like Homer Simpson into the background (laughs) where he's like, I don't know why I'm here because he couldn't add vocally. You you think about it like they really criticize a lot of people today, especially with social media like that person isn't talented. They're just popular. And it's like, yeah, but there are people like that. And Bob Dylan not that I'm saying he's not talented, obviously. He can play Clearly, guitar. Yeah. He can play guitar. <laughs> do, do I'm just saying like... his vocals, I mean, you could have taken a lesson. That's all I'm saying. Right? But well, like, I the think... insults are going to come. <laughs> I the insults think... will come for us on this, but. Insulting Bob Dylan is the number one way to get a lot of men angry at you. It's yeah. just fun to throw out at a party as an, <laughs> as a, a, an opinion right out the gate. I heard he's a rapist. <laughs> I. <laughs> Well, we've also <laughs> insulted Taylor Swift on this podcast, so we're equal. But it's like he, the reason people like him is because I mean, yes, I I like his songs. He I can do write a love, good song. He's got some great songs, but also it's like there's the cult of personality that right. it says something about you that he's your guy and he's the person that you like versus like yeah, he someone who has a, a haircut of, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, it's like sometimes don't you find it vicious online when they do that isolate the vocals of pop singers oh, and yeah. you find out they don't like Britney Spears is just like uh, 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 uh. <laughs> bless her heart she's trying her best but you're like I we all know that yeah that's not our issue like we know that yeah we still like her she she's had great the dancer. package she had the she had great choreography I mean I can't get no satisfaction and the slave I'm a slave for you on the MTV awards oh, was amazing. phenomenal. Amazing. Was, I put up there with the Madonna like a virgin performance. It's the same thing with like, for example, Lana Del Rey when she had that horrendous um, SNL. The SNL performance. I love her. But like she it it doesn't invalidate her. I still like the way her music sounds. I like her whole persona. Yes. Well, Mariah Carey was never a, she didn't really like doing the live performance. Oh my God. Remember when she did New Year's Eve (laughs) and she was like, sorry, they didn't really do a sound check. So I'm walking through it. I'm walking through it. But actually it's like, I mean, that was very entertaining. (laughs) She's an entertainer. And you know, she keeps the drama going. What I like about her is like, I I love the lore behind her. I love it. I love it. Like she, if she's wearing heels, she needs someone to carry her to the stage. (laughs) I love I love everything about her. We should do an episode of uh, divas and diva behavior. (gasps) Oh, that's such a good one. Diva behavior. Because like, have you ever had diva behavior? Oh my gosh. I don't think I ever have because of my people pleasing it conflict. Yeah, it's a big problem, but I would love to. I think one time I abused power in the open mic scene of Houston. I felt oh. I was starting to get booked on the showcase shows on the weekend. And I thought <laughs> I could just pull to the front. And yeah. I realized that was obnoxious. Excuse me. A star's coming through. I'll I be do, going first. I do seven minutes instead of five. Uh, yeah. um, <laughs> I'm blowing the light. <laughs> 
it's hilarious. I mean, diva behavior has a it can be anywhere. Yes, it's, it's very ubiquitous in that way. You can abuse it at the lowest form. Yes, it yes. is fascinating when you see somebody get just a little bit of power. As soon as they get that clipboard, you're like, you've turned psycho. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And you know that they were latent. It was a latent psychosis all along. Or kind of like when you get the headset and you work at Old Navy, I would be abusing that. <laughs> <laughs> Jerome, come in. <laughs> Jerome, we have an emergency. Buy sweatpants. Um, well, let me tell you something. I have been having an elderly morning because I had told you about this a little bit, but obviously I'm wearing my contacts today, so yes. I can't really see. But I, the way I put my contacts in, this is the only way that's been successful, which I saw on a YouTube video recommended by an eye doctor. He said, you wrap your... <laughs> why? I don't know why he was doing it like this, but this was the position. You have to hold your eye to the bone to get it in. Okay. So your lid doesn't, and that's the only way I can get them in. So I did that this morning and I've had horrific neck pain. Anytime I like move my neck to the side, it's actually better now because I, I, I've been like, I'm like doing a, yeah. And now I'm like the stretching person in the workplace, like, excuse me. Yeah. But, um, it was so bad. I was riding the train here like this. <laughs> It's the word, particularly when you're like, it's never in a strength. It's never like you're lifting a car yeah. to help a child. Right, right. It's not like. It's like, but pick, I had one, I picked up a bobby pin and threw out my back at the gym. It's so maddening because I also haven't been working out that much lately. I haven't been to the gym in a week. The last time I went to the gym, it was like Pilates. I haven't done yoga lately. And I know that I have to do that because I'm in my late 30s. And if I don't, then things start happening. Well, particularly from what I gather is that we the, you probably pinched a nerve. Yeah. And they're so flimsy. They're so flimsy, And if those anything just rusts up against it, you're in... <laughs> Pain. Well, like, that's what I learned with sciatic is that you have to do all these stretches so you pull the muscle away from the nerve. Yeah. I'm sure there's a okay. doctor out there. You will know this better, but this is what I'm gathering yes. from what I've dealt with. That's what I... So I'm, I stretch now. I'm going to do... Yeah, I haven't been... I have not been... I've been doing, like, a little bit of stretching, like, five minutes here, five minutes there. But it's like, tonight when I go home, I'm going to... As much as I do not want to do it, I'm going to do a full yoga with Adrian, a full stretching, realigning, part of my realigning practice. But I'm so, it's so annoying because I, I guess I've been living in denial of it a little bit because I hear, you know, you always hear people who are in their like even late 20s or early 30s who, you know, they maybe don't work out as much or they don't walk, you know, they're not super into fitness yeah and they're always like man i pulled my arm sneezing and you're like well that's because you don't take care of yourself <laughs> but then it's like and it, it happened to me yeah i'm I so was sorry i'm sorry so for sorry i shaming you. you yeah i didn't mean to call you fat <laughs> yeah i'm so sorry because it's like it, it is so maddening to be like well i just let go of my stretching for like, let's say it's been a couple weeks, a couple weeks that I haven't been on my regular gym routine. And then now my body is fully disintegrating, which it's horrific. Brings us to our topic is um, getting, getting older. older and how to deal with that. <laughs> I love describing things. Can I say um, my new kind of favorite thing is to describe something like innocuous but slightly negative is horrific <laughs> yes oh using horrific it was like the movie saw that's what it was like it was like a man sawing into my stomach for a key okay well that's what when i was explaining my sciatic back pain i was like it's like uh somebody took a dental floss lit it on fire and wrapped it around my hips really oh, tight oh ouchie like saw yeah 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 and then he made me dig out my butthole for a key <laughs> <laughs> but the problem with back pain, and I think I talked about this, nobody wants to hear your story. Nobody wants to hear. I'm like, I'm like, there I was putting my contact at in, the in a part. bizarre way. <laughs> <laughs> People are like, yeah, and you're like, but why were you doing it like that? I'm like, I don't know. I saw it on YouTube. I know, and it's always so lame. Like when I had the back pain last year, they were like, um, did you do anything different? And I was like, well, my husband's out of town, so I switched pillows. <laughs> And his was a little bit more firm and upright. So I think that's what pinched my nerve in yeah. the night where I, my head was slightly, the five degrees did me in. <laughs> I remember when and you had so the, pillow, the pillow injury. Oh my God. I, I wanted to unalive myself. Yeah. It's off myself. Can we you, say that instead of 
commit suicide. I think I like saying off. Well, I think I think what we're getting at is that you wanted an end, <laughs> an end <laughs> no matter what cost. Well, it's also so isolating. I had to lie on the floor mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. every waking moment. It makes you appreciate. So I canceled everything. Yeah, yeah. It makes you. It gives you a new appreciation for people that live with chronic pain because I think like one one. Th- one of the tragedies of life with chronic pain is that people kind of like write it off. Like I have a friend who has chronic back pain and she's like, people will be like, have you gotten a massage? Right. She's like my debilitating back pain. Yeah. That I've, I've, I get injections into it. Yeah. Well, <laughs> like, like, the- no, go to Chinatown, <laughs> go to my place. They're very hard. Well, <sighs> there's also, and I get this and I think there's probably some truth. There's a well-known book about Back pain. I think living with back pain is that and it. And they yeah. say that it uh, could be emotional trauma, which is yeah. such a funny thing to say to somebody with extreme pain in their back to be like, "You have a ma- lot of work to were do." Were you <laughs> molested as a kid? <laughs> Maybe that's yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> and I do have chronic back pain. Uh, but however, I will say I think that because when I do the stretching and when I work out, I have. Zero back pain, right? So, but well, like when I fly, when I sit the poorly, sitting is the worst part. Like that's when it tightens up, and I know that I have scoliosis, so it's like I have to manage it. Yeah, you proactively. Keep it but I do also think like I store stress in my back. Like, have you ever right. been like walking around on a cold day, and you like you're like just like this? You know, yes. you get inside, and you're like, okay. or when like um I. Matt Wayne would call a hornet in the car like a personality oh. type where you can't make eye contact and you realize <laughs> as soon as they leave that you're like all of a sudden your body is relaxed again. Oh my again. goodness. I have not heard of that but I love that term. It's one of my favorites That is such terms a lady journey. that I ever use and I give Matt Wayne credit wherever I can. A monster in the house. Yes. Yeah. But a hornet in the car is the best because you're just like don't look. Just try not to make any eye contact. Stay still. Don't engage. Yeah. And maybe it will fly out the windows. Yes. Soon. Gray rocking. Gray rocking. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Meanwhile, as they're like, I'm being attacked at my job right now. Right. Like, Where they're like, what? <laughs> What's your problem? And you're like, nothing. <laughs> yeah. No problem. <laughs> but yeah, the yeah. back pain, that one's hard. But they, I did the whole time when I was dealing with, I did force myself to do yoga every day and it did feel better. And I think they say that you should try to work through it. Yes. And not yeah. like work out, not do a strenuous workout, but at least the stretching and yogas or pl- Pilates kind of stuff. Yeah, I'm going I'm going back to Pilates tomorrow. I, I 100% agree with that. It's like you do have to work through it because if you, especially... Uh, I even remember like when I used to teach preschool, I would do yoga. But then if I fell off it for a long time, there was a time where I picked up a little boy who was upset. He was like kind of screaming and trying to run out the door. It sounds like, you know, only because (laughs) he was in a bad mood, but he was a big boy. And I pulled I've never pulled a muscle like that before and one of my girlfriends that I work with she was like have you been doing yoga I was like I haven't done anything thinking like oh I should be good she was like I think that's why you pulled your back out and I was like oh of course it is from not doing yoga from being stiff oh yeah you know from being like so stiff but you know yoga we didn't talk about this in the hygiene episode but yoga is actually such a thing for personal hygiene that's why they call it like the jungle doctor I used to go to this, I did a work study at this yoga studio in Midtown Manhattan. It was called Yoga Sutra years ago. And I had a really great teacher. His name was Kevin, hilariously. He was like a businessman turned yogi and I just loved him. But he would always talk about like when you do these yoga practices, these postures, these movements that you don't do in your everyday life. It's called the jungle doctor because you're squeezing organs and you're releasing old blood and oh. you're causing it's the same as like doing like a um lymph tissue massage where you're gotcha. like releasing, releasing, or like releasing the synovial fluid that the lubricates your system. joint. Yeah. Just yes. like releasing. So it, it's you know, and again, like my hygiene has been, I haven't been washing my face. I'm not doing yoga. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> well, I also, from what I gather, yoga and are the Pilates. Uh, can realign you, like yeah. help with posture, which is a good hygiene thing to have. If you get out of alignment, I, I've had, you know, my chronic hip pain, which I think now is my piriformis muscle getting pinched, but like living not in alignment with your muscular skeletal system or yeah. whatever the word is. I'm not a chiropractor. <laughs> I'm a doctor now. Um, <laughs> it's It can be so painful. So well, painful. 
I I've never liked my walked my walk. Yeah. Um, and I've always hoping that when I do Pilates now that it will help. And I've noticed that my hip flexors are so tight. Oh my god! Ping. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it's I'm like. I don't understand how these girls can hold their legs up like that as long as they can. I'm actually really good at Pilates. I have a very strong core. I can do like I can do like a full I can put my legs up in the air and like do a full roll up. It's <laughs> and I demand that we point do the it. camera to the ground and I will show everyone now. It's I only because I've been going to Pilates like regularly for like about a year now and I in the Pilates class I love it's easy and we just do like I love it because it, it like there's never a point where you're like, I think I'm going to throw up. Right. It's it's relaxed. But at the same time, I've never been where I'm like, I can't lift my leg. Yeah. Like it's, oh, the, it's so great. One side to the next side, you know, like bringing the leg. I, I do eight. And you're like, I had no idea that this was this hard. Yeah. Burnout. It's I love the it. hardest workout I've done. Yeah. At this, well, I can lie down, which I love a workout oh, where I can lie oh down. Oh my God, give me some peace and quiet. Yes. I've been through enough. That's my <laughs> that's my new catchphrase. I've been through enough. The other thing about aging, which I, uh, you know, I love, I love growing into myself and I feel like, especially all the work that I've done on myself with my emotions, being mindful, like being more mature and creating relationships with people. I think you're more chill. As you get older, hopefully some people get angrier. But I think that's years of resentment that they haven't worked out. You have to. Yeah, I think like maturing, maturing is such it is nice to be like, oh, I'm I'm coming into myself. Yes. And you always when you get older, I feel like you start realizing (laughs) whatever. If I get yelled at because I did something wrong. Five minutes of misery, I can move on. Yeah, I'm not in trouble. Yeah, and I'm not in trouble. How am I in trouble as an adult? Yeah, like I'm good. What, I'm not what, doing you put me in jail. Yeah, <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna be locked up abroad right now because I didn't fold the shirts right, Old Navy. Right <laughs> with my <laughs> Jerome. Can I speak with you? Um, <laughs> and then also like because you've gotten as you've gotten older, you've seen patterns in life that you know that things aren't permanent. So yes. like. In my early years, I felt like a, f- a feeling if it didn't go away after a week, then I was always going to live with that. Oh, my God. Yeah. And now knowing that those feelings will disappear, I know when I get them again that I can just be like this will go away eventually. Yes. Managing yeah. feelings has been huge for me. One thing I noticed, like I could never have done this in my 20s, but like sit down and read like a really intense like business or self-help book. I never could have done that in my or, 20s. Or, um, I never gave a shit about history. Yeah. Like, like and that's all I want to consume. Like that guns, germs and steel, you know, like that. I, I haven't read it, but I am interested in it. I've read like yes. a few chapters. I could easily sit down or like reading um, Um, One thing that I didn't do until I was in my 30s was like give myself financial literacy. There's no way I could have done that in my 20s. I just didn't have the attention span. Yeah. So it's interesting in a way where I'm like, I don't know. You know, it just didn't seem like because my life was so exciting. Like, I'm not going to now my life is boring. I'm like doing CBD. I'm like, why wouldn't I learn stocks? Which (laughs) boring is nice. Oh, my gosh. Somebody there was a post on TikTok recently. It was somebody that we knew. and It was like, what's your take? And it was on the subway. And the girl just ripped into the basic girlfriend, the one that thinks she's different for liking pomegranate. Oh, I saw that. I did too. And I remember seeing it and being like. This is actually like a harsh takedown of a person. And then that kept getting stitched. And they were like, as you, they were saying, um, well, there's nothing wrong with being basic. And I feel like as you get older, you're like, I love Olive Garden. I love it. I like the simplicity of life. And then somebody tagged this creator called the POV is your boring coworker. And it's just your coworker talking about like going to Kohl's this weekend. They couldn't figure out which cardigan to get. And it's, she's just like really sweet and lovely. And you're like, that's me now. I know. I, <laughs> that's lady journey. That's so lady journey. <laughs> I have an empathy for that type of person because the person, you know, I, I get it. I get it. It's fun. It's a fun take. But right. it's like, what's the alternative? Like, <laughs> I, I'm exhausting myself trying to create this like <laughs> lifestyle false life where I love going to a rave in a in a freaking warehouse and drinking absinthe. Yeah, like, going against what you actually like. Where you're like, I think the girl with pomegranate 
who likes pomegranate juice has made peace with herself and is like, well, I like it. Sounds stable. Yeah. <laughs> Sounds stable. Give me that palm. Okay. But that felt like that's like an older, I feel like as you're aging too, that's like a mindset that you have. You're like, I'm sorry, this is me. Like I get enjoyment going to I Kohl's like, and talking about my pottery. I like the container store. Yeah. I want to go there. I go to Home Goods to decompress. Oh my god! I was on I world. I was on world market online. I love world market. <laughs> oh my I god! Be goodbye, lost there. goodbye Saturday. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Sue us. We're boring. We love soup. Yeah, but it. That's what I find as like when you get older. Like being boring is great. Yes. I'm. T- I don't need to be the chaos of the 20s yeah or also giving a shit what a guy likes like I hope he's looking at my stories I feel like when I yeah. turned 30 I remember just being like this I will never pretend to like football ever again yes I am not wasting another Sunday while watching NFL I so true can't I find it so depressing I'd rather go to a live game and have the experience of having a, a hot football. dog you, you want the hot dogs I want the hot dogs <laughs> <laughs> give me the hot dogs but the idea of spending eight hours inside a house watching endless football is numbing it's no. boring as shit to me I'm like can we have another yeah. room where I can watch at least real housewives uh, please a women's room yeah <laughs> let the women go <laughs> a women's quarters <laughs> yes well yeah I do think my 20s was very chaotic with like drinking doing drugs um like you know doing open mics being out late every night like c- trying to hold down a job while doing all of that so it is nice in a way to be like I have 100% got it out of my system like I have no desire to like do Molly in the rain. Okay, or, like <laughs> I'm good. Exactly. Or like I remember thinking I would have to just sit there while my boyfriend played video games for hours. Oh yeah. Yeah. What do I want that time back? Putting up with heinous man behavior in your twenties is I something like it's not even I don't even put blame on him. No, no. It was not asked of me. No, absolutely I just not. I had to be there for support. I know. I had such low self esteem in my twenties. I remember <laughs> I know I've told this story on here before, but I'll never forget I was dating this guy when I was like 23 and his bathroom door didn't close yeah. in his apartment. And you have to like s- hover <laughs> and hold the door <laughs> shut because it would pop open. And so I would just do that. I'd be like sleeping with him doing that. And then and then he was just he had no job. He had no job. And I know I would be so kind. I'm like my Time, the guy didn't have a cell phone and he would have to call me from the convenience store from his apartment complex and he would have to cross a busy road. <laughs> that I like, would be, be like, careful. hey, look, we were all having downtime in our 20s and you're like, no, you idiot. Yeah, like, let it, let him go. Be alone. Yeah, and I didn't get that mindset. I, get, I, I don't know why, but I didn't figure out to like myself until my 30s. Yes, there's something about the self-esteem slowly developing. Yeah, yes. and to be like and then also I guess like the general lack of energy where you're like I can't I'm sorry, I can't hover pee on. I just don't I don't have the leg strength at this point. Right. Like, I haven't been to Pilates. <laughs> um but one thing that kills me is that like and this is everybody in my family. Like we have a very fast metabolism in yes. our family. So it's like everyone's like rail thin in my family until they hit 30. And then it's like, OK, there's a problem. There's a problem. Like, well, you get used to your high metabolism lifestyle. Yeah. Yeah. And like yeah. running around like when I was teaching preschool every day. I, I taught in Brooklyn Heights and there's this incredible deli, which you have to go do if you ever go. It's called Lassen and Hennings. It's wildly expensive. It's so overpriced. Who cares? I would eat there every day. I don't mind it was overpaying if it's really good. So good. The food is so good. Every day after... I would get a hunk of bread pudding, mm. the most amazing. And they always had, it was always different, but it was like just that congealed yes. bread and okay. milk and nuts and raisins and mm. yeah, comforting. I, I mean, it was probably like a thousand calories and I would just like eat it on my way home as no my treat. Biggie. And like right when I turned 30, I'm like, why's my, why's my <laughs> neck? What's well, that? I have turkey neck immediately. Well, you'll start, especially when you, you're getting your photo taken all the time when you're on stage and you're just like I didn't realize I had a double chin well yeah yeah I 
getting the profile for me, that's when I'm like, oh Lord. <laughs> oh dear Lord. Matt, something's Sally, amiss. He, he just taped me like that the other day and I was like, he if you catch me from, if you fucking tape me from my side, I will call the cops on you. I will accuse you of murder. I swear. <laughs> he took a heinous photo of me when I now we're dumping like on this poor guy. He's a lovely guy. Lovely I love guy. his work. And a great I love photographer, his work. but the video where I'm just like looking at my notes with my chin like this and he's doing side profile and like this. I didn't notice until I saw the footage and I'm like this Matt. Oh, he took one of me and and the, and I don't blame him for this because it's like I just should never be photographed doing my comedy act because I just do a lot of act outs where I'm like hey! <laughs> and then it's like that's not a that's not a freeze frame. That's not a freeze yeah. frame. Well, it's not meant to be captured. <laughs> Beyonce had I think she got rid of um taking photos of her at her concert because on I think for a while there were a lot of photos of her and her dance moves where it would be like this. <laughs> but oh, yeah. I liked it because I was like, oh, thank God. Because and it, wait, have you ever edited yourself and then you press pause and you're like, well, I had no idea that one eye goes down before the other one. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Every time I <laughs> I know you're like, oh, I talk out of one side of my mouth. <laughs> I'm Kate Middleton right now. I, like, I didn't know I walk pigeon toed. <laughs> Every time I get headshots, <laughs> I have I'm like, oh, I'm I'm literally have a weak eye that I'm squinting out one of my eyes. And I are I do have a weak eye because of the weed killer spray, but but it's it goes, you know, you your body starts changing, you know, like 30s, your body starts changing, like your skin is sagging, like, you know, you're getting like and it's normal. It's normal. But then now you're now you're, you're out of dying. E you're out of eating everything you want in your 20s and like running it off because you're running around like chasing a boy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll pay for the dinner this time. And and then like you you get into your 30s and it's like, OK, now my face is looking different. I have deep set lines. I have gray hair. And then now you're in this whole other world of like, OK. Am I going to fight it? Am I just going to be like Beth Stelling in her new special? Like, I'm I'm proudly aging. I, we, LA needs a control group, we which I thought a, yes. was really funny. So funny. I love that special. I also, I like that she get her on said the that. I do. I know. I'm going to send her this clip a, as a way of asking her. <laughs> <laughs> I am such a fan, and I was so appreciative of somebody being like, I'm going to try. I think she said try not to yeah. do. I guess. And she's living in LA, and it's harder out there. Harder, Yeah. Um, but the other, it's also so funny too, is like, again, as you get older, like I've hit an age where I feel like I know that I'm not even competing with younger women. You know what I mean? Like yes. I'm out, I'm retired. Oh yeah. And yeah. so I also, I was trying to make this into a bit, but instead what I do is I just co compliment younger women on their skin as if I'm like Hannibal Lecter and I'm going to wear it. I'm like, there's no pores. I love your skin. I know. It's always, you're always complimenting young woman's skin. Can you sleep with my husband? <laughs> <laughs> there was uh, an article that was in the cut recently. Did you see this? People were getting livid about it. I read the full article. I read the full article and I have to say it was, it it struck me as while it did have some good points. Is it, this the age gap one? Yeah, it was like the case for marrying an older man, which I am in an age gap relationship. And as such, I did have to agree with some things in her premise, which was that she's in her 20s and she sees a lot of her friends getting um, in relationships with other guys in their 20s and and which we've all experienced this. And it's like we're talking about now, like ending up. Um, teaching the guy how to do his laundry, ending up t sucking her own energy to kind of keep the relationship afloat. Your mom emotionally, yeah. You and then those guys will end up not not even marrying not marrying you, but then they'll go and marry somebody else. And I do think that she has a point. However, like you could also just be single. Yes, yeah, there is that, but you do. I remember it being at thirty. I dated a guy that was in his twenty twenty one. Oh my God, I love this. And I just finished date, ended a relationship of six years with yeah. a guy that was approaching 40. Yeah. And I remember, or 35. And I remember being like, this guy, this 20 year old, 21 year old, has got his shit together more. Agree. Than the case guy that case. I was dating. It is case by case, but if we were going to do a generalization, generalization, yeah. I would agree with 
the article. Yes. But one of the points that she makes in the article, which I think is what really set a lot of people off, and, and it was a little triggering, was like, well, as a young woman, I realized that like my best asset and the best asset I'll ever have is my youth, so I might as well lock down a man while I can, and I don't know why other women aren't taking this easy way out. And it's like, well, I mean, if your dream is to play tennis every day on your husband's schedule in the south of France, like I guess that is a good idea and no shame, and it's kind of similar to getting a sugar daddy, which is now seen as like being more empowered. Right, and then also I feel like there are still a lot of guys that date age appropriate women. Do you know what I mean? There that are aren't it's not patriarchal like that. There are absolutely men who are in their thirties who are dating other women in their thirties. Yeah. So it's like you don't need to be twenty. Like I, this is the only time I could lock down a man in his thirties, right? So I think that I think that there she was and she's only 27 now at the writing of this article. So there are things that were like a little short sighted, a little misguided, but she did have some interesting points and it was well written enough that you're like, oh, I this is interesting. I created to read. buzz. So that's always got, a good job. You got some buzz. Got some buzz. But the, there is one issue with the because I have a friend whose mom was 19 when she married her, his dad at 36. Oh, hot. Yeah, and that's, legal drinking age. <laughs> Look out. This was the 60s. Yeah. Um and later on when the health declines of the one he broke his hip, it's she was still in her prime like in her 50s and having to take care of a guy with like a broken hip. I mean, she did adore and love, so at the end of the day, those are the choices that you make. Yes. But I do think when you're dealing with um later on in your life in your 50 and your partner's approach like is on deathbed, you're still in the age group where you can still do a lot of things and you're not going to be able to. Yes. And that's, you just that's hope your thing. partner stays on top of their health yeah. as well. And people can get sick at any age too. Right. And I think, but I think like the it's, main thing to be like, you know, the main takeaway from the article that a lot of, that set a lot of people off is like, but being young is not the only thing that women have to offer. It's not even the best thing. Like, yeah. you know, you, well, especially, particularly like, I'm saying this for a lot of when you hang out with a lot of younger men and women, sometimes you're like the conversation is boring. lacking, very it's lacking. lacking. And yeah. then it's also embarrassing when you're like, like the other day I watched a comic make a reference to the movie Risky Business. Mm -hmm. That movie's over 40 years old now. It's crazy. And I was like in the room and I was like, I actually think. Everybody in this room is too young to know what that reference is. Probably, yeah. Yuck. And it's a popular movie, but I don't think it's popular enough to transcend generations. Yeah. So it's just one of those things where you start making... That's why I, after a while, I've kind of let go of the dream of SNL. Mm -hmm. Because I just picture myself pitching sketches and it's like, okay, it sounds like Footloose. <laughs> yeah. And, and they're like... like uh, yeah, like, um, no, we our reference point is knocked up, yeah. and that's as far back as we can go. <laughs> like, yeah. you don't want to be the old person in the room, and it just inadvertently happens. Yeah, and yeah. it is hard, I think, for women, too, where we're put in this... We, we have a challenge that we're facing, whether it's like, okay, are you fighting aging, which is what I am doing on certain levels, even though I'm like, I've become a little anti-Botox, not because I have any issue with it, but it's because I think it's really expensive, I think it's really painful, Painful, and I think it's really time consuming. Time consuming. And also I feel like it takes up a lot of mental real estate to be like this. Is that an, oh my God, another line is showing yes. up. It's like, it's hard. I think it's hard to keep up with stuff. And then I think I told you yesterday what I'm planning on doing is just I'm going to start saving up money for my light facelift when I turn 50. Yes, <laughs> getting my facelift. But yeah, it's hard. Like I even saw someone on TikTok. I found this to be really interesting. She was like, um... I'm aging naturally. I don't want to get a facelift because of, she was talking about like the energy lines in your face, the mm. meridians. She was like, I don't want to mess with that. And I would oh. rather just like, this is my face. This is who I am. And I don't want to mess with anything. Yeah, you don't want to go Uncanny Valley. Like, it's so nerve wracking. Yeah, it's but interesting. Man, I've seen some facelifts lately that I'm like, that's Demi Moore, Brad Pitt. You see Pitt. the ones on, you see the ones on TikTok now, the before and after. You're like, dang. There's like, one small one that they do that's not super drastic. I think it's mainly like neck and whatever, maybe bluff or something. Oh, yeah. The, and then you're the like, eyelid. well, it's not that bad. It's not that bad. But whatever. But I know it's like it's you're it's just hard because you're going to be fucking with your face. And if anything goes wrong. 
Annette, you can't fix it. Annette Benning just had a show on she Peacock. She amazing. She has had zero work done. And like she's making a, a point of like, it's not that I'm like standing I proud of like I'm anti-plastic surgery. I just don't want to do it. It's just not me. I just don't feel like it. And and she was in the show Apples. Apples. Did you see it? I started it. But I can't pay attention to it. It was not. Kind of weird. You know, it was enough to suck me in to like, so I could escape from life. Yeah. (laughs) So I'll give it that. But like, I was looking at her face and, and she does look like she's aged but like at the same time it's like she's playing a mom she's not in there like uh oh like cousin yeah <laughs> cousin sally's here it's well, like she just looks like a mom and she's playing a mom so but like nicole kimmons played a mom to an eight-year-old for f- eight-year-old for 40 years now yeah nicole's kidman's face to me i'm like i don't like the way it looks you see her on the big screen being like stories <laughs> What an amazing place to tell stories. And it's like, I just, I feel like, just stop. Yeah, it's, I, and I always question what it looks like in real life. But I do appreciate the Annette Bennings and the Jamie Lee Curtises that also, and I, I'm like, they do look amazing. She looks great. I like my, um, who's my other, oh, Charlotte Rampling. Mm-hmm. Uh, is another one and I was telling Katie I do a Pinterest board whenever I see a cool stylish older lady yes. that doesn't look like she's been partaking into too much plastic surgery I love this I love it yes it makes me feel better about aging because then I'm like okay I can do that that's yes. what I'm gonna try to do I love um sorry I was like cutting you off saying this I'm like stop yeah. <laughs> I love but I do love the idea of you know I think as women like Asian can be very terrifying to be like oh my god like once I hit 40 my life is over and I'll be invisible yeah. but I love the idea of positive conceptualizing of like I like we we're talking about like Iris Apfel like her eyewear her iconic style Statement necklaces like you um, can be older right your colors. life isn't ending at 40 like you know, enjoying fashion at that age sounds so much fun because you've collected so much over there I'm gonna stop throwing out stuff that I feel like I bought that I liked initially yes hoard. I'll throw out Just five hoard. running sweaters but I'll keep my good stuff keep those pieces and I like the idea too of thinking like there is something that they always say like when you get older when you get into that decade of like the 60s where you realize like you've already like tried and tried at your career you've already like tried and tried at your family like you've done a ton of stuff in your life and then now you get to this point where it's like oh my gosh I can really spend my time like appreciating the simple things I can travel I can you know I can work a job that I enjoy that's low stress you know yeah or I feel like the drive kind of you realize like what am I like I was thinking about this the other day like what is my the whole purpose is so I can live in a nice place and you're like well I already do you get so caught up I was talking with Ariel Elias last night when I saw her at the when I was at the Comedy Cellar holiday party <laughs> thank you I'll be performing there next Thursday at 12 35 a.m. <laughs> um, but we were talking about the Sky Lounge you know and like is it even worth it to flush a four hundred and fifty dollars so I can get to the next level or am I just taken in by this marketing of like I'm so caught in the rat race that she was like they gamify it they intentionally gamify it so you're like I'm gold status I want you know I'm getting the upgrade and And then they take it away they keep changing the conditions where they're like okay now you have to be at platinum in order or now you have to fly like five times a week in order to get away from you but they just (laughs) they keep you in this they keep you in this thing of like okay once I get the next thing once I get the next thing and it's like meanwhile you're not even appreciating it's like I'm in a tube in the air right now yes well remember like you traveling in the 60s and 70s they it was so luxurious oh my and then now you're just in a a greyhound bus in the sky I mean (laughs) shit is happening in the air that should be happening on the bus oh my gosh it's chaos it is it's not and I flew spirit recently I think I was telling you this and I was like this is I can't fly spirit anyway guys I always think I'm like $89 and then at the end when I I'm ready to pay it. So I'm like, oh, it's actually like three hundred dollars. Yeah, yeah. Because oh, you need luggage. Yeah. You're like oh, oh. I guess I'll just fly with my clothes on my body. Yes. Well, we were talking a little bit about um. The, there's kind of like a different standard of aging now too. It feels like we're talking about like 
for example, Golden Girls versus Jennifer Aniston. Well, that always blows my mind. It's like, um, yeah, Jennifer Aniston's the same, is around the age of some of the Golden Girls, like Dorothy. I think they were in their 50s and Blanche were around there. Yeah. And then like Dorothy's mom was probably in her late 60s or 70s at that point. But then you're like, to see what that age now... They it's, don't look like golden girls. The women in their 50s do not look like golden you girls. You could be 50 years old and look like you're 30. You yes. know, especially even without work. You right. know, it depends on like. I think it's diet and diet, drink, exercise, not drinking. Not drinking, like not smoking, doing these things that like age you, you yeah. know? Or even like you could also be like a bigger person and just like not be drinking. Right. And still have like a youthful. You could have like a youthful glow about you. And I think like society in general, especially in like New York and L.A., which is where we are. It's like I'm 37. Like I have no kids. I've never been married. Like in the 1980s. Yeah. My parents got married. My mom was 20. You know, it's like (laughs) when if I was my mom's age, I'd have two kids, you know, by now. So it's like. People, we're more open to people being on different timelines now. It's why you look at like Golden Girls. You're like, ew, old. Well, I, I, I mean, I love like, Golden Girls. I love Golden. That's, that's what comedy. we're all thinking. That's what we're all thinking. Exactly. Well, I mean, even when I was a kid, I was like, where, what are these my dresses? Like my sister and I would always be like, it's more like that's a Golden Girl dress. Yeah. And I just feel like nobody. People dress younger now. Like look at uh, Erica Jane from True. Uh, Real Housewives, like yeah. she's in her fifties and she's got like pigtails and wearing sweatshirts with knee high boots. Yeah, and like jeans. Everybody wears jeans now. Yeah, you know so, the culture's less formal. But I re- there's people in my life. I remember years ago, like I would there'd be like this girl that was like in her twenties, and I'd always be astounded. I was like, why are you dressing like chicos? <laughs> she would yeah. dress like a forty year old teacher. Yeah. And I was like, that's such an odd choice. That's one thing I love about the 90s. You know, what it was like in the 90s, once you hit like 20, you're like wearing like adult clothes. Yeah, khakis and a, like, like a cardigan. Dress, a yeah. scarf, you know, it's like now you're just like elderly Athleisure. in kind of like jeans. Yeah. Or like a tracksuit. Yeah. But I do, I do appreciate that now. And I try to keep it in mind for myself whenever I fear aging as a woman. Because of course there are all these things that they try to sell you money. This is going to make you young. This is going to make you desirable. I always keep that in mind of like age really is just a number. It doesn't matter. You could be 80 and still hanging out and having fun. Like you could be 80 going to open mics with young people or getting on TikTok, sharing your bits. Like there is so, and there is ageism, like obviously, but it's, I don't think it's as strong now as it has been. No, it's getting better. Like, that's why, but I still always think, that's why I don't quit stand-up, because I'm always worried as soon as I quit, they'll be like, we're really into middle-aged women right now. Look at Leanne Morgan. It's like popping off. I love love her. I love her story as like, she didn't start doing stand-up until she was already a mom and had kids, and it's like, I'm living under this delusion, like, oh my god, if I have kids, like, everything's gonna fall apart and I'll lose everything. It's like she started after she and had she kids. didn't even live in New York or L.A. She yeah, she's doing just doing her thing like you can find your niche. And it's very tempting, I think, as you age, especially in like work or entertainment to, to look back and be like, oh, my God, my time's passed. But it's like that's just a negative. I think that's just a negative thought pattern that um makes it harder for you to actually move ahead in the future. Yes. Well, you're I feel like you're stuck in a victim you put yourself mindset. in the victim mindset. You put yourself you can't in the move past. past it. Yeah. And it's like, why, you know, acceptance, accept whatever's happening and then move forward. Like plenty of people. I There are people that start stand up in their 40s and go on to be wildly successful. Yeah, I think from what I gather, Ricky Gervais is my um in, like inspiration because he didn't start stand up till later. Really, it wasn't until his like early late thirties or forties. Yeah, but he would like the he just did the Office. He was in mu- mu- a music group. 
mm-hmm. in his earlier years. Mm-hmm. But he, yeah, he wasn't into comedy until way later. Yeah, I have to, I have to remind myself of those things because it's Phyllis just, Diller was another one that was like that. Absolutely, yeah. Oh. She did. She was much older when she started. Here's another great thing. Okay, so Kim Gordon, the bassist from Sonic Youth, is having a complete renaissance right now, and she's in her seventies. Oh, I love this. Yeah, and she also had a kid later on in life, and. Well, I read, there are several bios that I, I love reading art artist bios. Like I read Patti Smith's We're Just Friends, Just mm-hmm. Friends. Mm-hmm. I think she moved to New York quite a little bit later. She wasn't in her early 20s. She was in her later 20s, maybe 30. Deborah Harry was quite, and Blondie was around her 30s. And then Kim yeah. Gordon was around her 30s when she joined Sonic Youth. So great. Louise Hay, I who I love, you know, she was really like influential self-help. And of course, like not all of her stuff is backed by science. Yeah. Fine. <laughs> but like she, I think, was married, got divorced and then got in the self-help world when she was in her 40s. And she I re- remember reading something from her that was like, I'm 70 and I always wanted to take ballroom dancing. And I just started and yeah. like, I can't wait. I can't wait to be like professional level ballroom dancer when I'm when I'm like in a couple of years. Right. Somebody I just saw a little quote online just being like, if you started your th- skill now in a year, if you did a, worked on it a little bit every day, you would be way better than most people. Yes, it's so true. It, it, well, I always think when I first moved to New York, I was 30 and I remember thinking I felt so old mm-hmm. and in, in the ski. It's so funny what you think think in that time period and then I look back on it and I'm like that's ridiculous yeah my Although, god any later <laughs> I know <laughs> yeah. well, like some people come here in 40 thinking that they're gonna make waves in the scene I'm like it's a lot I don't know there's still ageism in the clubs I think it's also hard when you move to New York later unless because, you've got a big following yeah if you have a stand any type of standard of living yeah <laughs> the city will be heinous for you because you'll be like I'm sorry we're just living with roaches it's I like know. Yeah, we kind of all are. We don't have a washing machine. We or, carry our clothes on our backs. Right. And you're like, um, it's not unusual to be in your 40s with a roommate. Yeah. Yeah. And enjoy it. Yeah. <laughs> Friends. Yeah. Well, everybody, what's your what's your anti-aging practices? What are you looking forward to doing as you age? Yeah. I just say um, it's never too limit. late to start. The sky's the limit. We've what got a lot say? of good years. The best time to plant a tree was 20 years ago or now yes Uh, enjoy and please like and subscribe for the love of god because we're gonna take this podcast (laughs) to the top if it freaking kills us yeah lady journey lady journey